The old Fitzgerald 19 year bottled and bond fall edition. This 19 year old expression is the oldest release in the old Fitz lineup to date, two years older than the spring 2022 release at 17. Uh, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on this, over oaked, delicious, don't like it, I love it. Well, I didn't get a bottle, but I got a sample. It's a Tuesday sampler on the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. Like, subscribe, do all the things you need to do to help grow the channel, really appreciate it. Uh, welcome back, uh, the fall 2022 edition of Old Fitzgerald Bottle and Bond Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is the first 19 year old of the nationally released series and features bourbon pulled from three different floors of Rick House F and one floor of Rick House X at Heaven Hill Distillery's main campus. So a quick history note, the Old Fitzgerald brand was acquired in 1999 by Heaven Hill because of the distilling pedigree and the intriguing story behind it. Uh, John E. Fitzgerald, the treasury agent with the keys to the warehouses that apparently knew where all the good barrels were. Now that story is also told through the lens of Larceny and Larceny barrel proof bottles with that keyhole on the front. You see John E. Fitzgerald's signature on that bottle as well. So that story is used a lot from a Heaven Hill perspective. So as usual, the Old Fitz 19 is bottled in a beautiful ornate decanter like this. This is the 16 year that I have. Uh, but the 19 comes in a bottle just like this, but it has a black label in the front. As usual, limited availability on these, bottled at 100 proof with suggested retail price of $240, but already seeing these on secondary and at retail stores going anywhere as high as $800 to $2,000. I do find it interesting with these releases each and every year, the variety of age statements. I think the youngest release was an eight year. We've had a nine, 11, 13, 14, 15. I just showed you the 16. We've had a 17 and now a 19. It makes you wonder is the goal for Heaven Hill to hit every age statement between eight and 20. And if they do, do they get into the 20s at some point? You know, the 20, 21, 22 year old age statements in the future? We'll see, that's a lot of friggin' decanters. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Let's see what people are talking about with this one. Here we go. Definite oak on the nose. Chocolate, good amount of chocolate here. Chocolate and, and coconut. Don't get a lot of coconut. I think I got coconut on a birthday bourbon maybe several years ago. I think that was the last time I got coconut. <laughs> so basically it's kind of like a little bit of a, of a Mounds bar in the glass. Definite toffee, it is sweet. A Little bit tannic on the nose. But, I mean, well, I haven't tasted it yet, but overpowering oak or over oaked, I'm not getting that on the nose, at least for me personally. It's actually a lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. I really thought from what I heard, a lot of, the, uh, a lot of that oak was gonna kind of overpower the experience. It's not really happening here, at least for me. It's a lot of sweetness. There's a little bit of a dusty funk to it, which I really like. All right, let's try it. The palette just brings a lot of chocolate, a lot of toffee. It is tannic. You definitely got a lot of that oak spice in there. Finish is short to medium. Again, only 100 proof. These aren't gonna blow you away. You know, 100 proof for a lot of people seems to be a sweet spot. But man, first impressions, I am not getting all this talk about it being over oaked at all. I mean, maybe because I'm used to drinking oakier stuff, maybe. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I, I don't know. I'm not really getting that. Let's go for another sip here. Second sip, I'll say this. There is a very heavy oak profile to this. However, I wouldn't say this is over oaked. Over oak to me is completely drying my palate out you know, getting a very bitter taste on it because there's so much oak, I'm not really getting that here. I'm getting a, a big punch of oak, obviously, but there's a lot of chocolate, a lot of toffee, some sweetness. That little hint of coconut is actually coming through on the pal a little bit too. But I think all of that is coming together for a pretty decent experience. Is it my favorite old fits that I've had? I don't think so. I still think my favorites to this day have been the 15 and the 16. Uh, that 16 I just showed you. 
And granted, I did not get a chance to try the 17. I did not get a sample for that one. And I was not able to get a bottle of that one. I heard a lot of people absolutely just fell in love with the 17. Um, some people seem to really like this and some people don't. For me, I think I'm somewhere in between. Do another sip here. See, the more I sip it, it's getting a little sweeter. It's not getting oakier. I think more of the toffee comes out, like the, the buttery notes, and that's what I appreciate about these older, old Fitzgerald releases. They get into more of a butterscotchy profile, which is the profile that I love. Now, I will say, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a good football game. It's a tale of two halves here. You have the first half of this, which starts off sweet, chocolatey, little coconut, toffee, little butterscotch, and then the second half of this gets a little bit of a darker, oakier profile. I don't agree with the sentiment though that it's over oaked because I'm not getting over oaked experiences, at least to me on my palate. The Knob Creek 15 to me was the one that was over oaked. Like that one to me, I felt like I was like licking tree bark. Like I was getting that type of like tannic dry experience from that one, not getting that here. All right, last sip. Yeah, I kind of maintain what I said. Tail of two halves, front of the palate. Sweet, chocolatey, little bit of oak tan in there in the front too. Little bit of like a tingliness I think that you're getting from that oak. And then as it hits the back of the palate, I think the oak really sets in and get a little more like the oak leather, those uh, those tannic notes from an ultra aged bourbon. But to say that this is over oaked, I totally disagree with that. I think there is some, I think it depends on the person. It's gonna depend on your level of experience when it comes to ultra aged bourbons. If you're used to just drinking eight, nine, 10, 11, maybe even 12 year old bourbons, yeah, this is gonna come off really oaky. But if you have experience with drinking a lot of different oak uh, and a lot of ultra aged bourbons, I don't think that this is over oaked by any means. All right, final breakdown on this. All right, guys, final breakdown for the Old Fitz 19 year. $240 is the retail price. Secondary, I told you I've seen these everywhere from 900 all the way up to $2,000. Uh, availability, again, this is Old Fitz and they're always limited. For the value of Old Fitzgerald, I think this one we saw a little bit of a price bump uh, compared to the age. Normally, you see these at $10 per year of aging. And if you could kind of stick to that, I think that's really fair. So this one, 19 years old, 240 bucks. Yeah, it's a little bit above that $10 per year price point, but I think you're also getting a nice decanter, uh, high age, great distillery, I'll say that this one is uh, even. What's the most I pay for this one? This one is not blowing me away. It is good. I don't think it's great. Um, I love the balance of it. I do not think it's over oaked. However, I know a lot of people will love to collect these just to get that high age statement on their shelf. But for me, the most I'd pay is retail. I'm not paying anywhere above 240 to get this bottle. Again, a new entry into the final breakdown is alternatives. So alternatives to this bottle is tough. There just are not a lot of high aged weeded bourbons out there in the market. However, there are some. Now, if you can't get your hands on Weller, um, obviously we mentioned Larceny here for uh, the Old Fitzgerald, which is basically the same exact mash bill Obviously, it's not as old as this. Plus, you get a Larceny barrel proof option if you want something with a little bit more punch to it. But finding something this age, you know, outside of William Rue Weller would be pretty hard to find. But Larceny, Maker's Mark, Frey Ranch is doing a nice uh, weeder, Wyoming Whiskey, Old Elk. And one last one's Boone County. Boone County makes some great weeded bourbons. I think six, seven, eight years old are getting higher and higher each and every year. So plenty of options for weeded bourbons and whiskeys than there ever has been before. And finally, is this a recommend? I mean, I don't hate it, but I, I'm not super in love with it. It's, it's good, it's a solid old Fitzgerald. I think there have been ones that I have enjoyed more. Listen, if you could find this bottle for retail, then obviously it's an automatic pickup because when are you gonna come across a 19 year old weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill ever again, if you're, uh, especially when you're talking about retail price. Now, if you're in the market and you're kind of noodling between paying upwards of a thousand dollars for this one, do not do that. It is not nearly that good. If you're planning on, especially if you're planning on buying it for a thousand and then wanting to drink it, I don't think you'll be super impressed with this one. It's good. And like I said, depending on your palate, this could be a little bit too far on the oak side for some. Um, you know, for me, it's not over oak, it's a nice balance, but there's not enough of that butterscotchy, 
sweetness to balance out the oak that I love in a really good Old Fitz decanter. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this Tuesday sampler where we tasted the old Fitzgerald 19-year bottle of bourbon. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you've gotten to try this one. Was it over oak to you or was it just right or it wasn't really too impressive to you? Love to hear your thoughts. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. See you right here next time on The Mass and Drum. Cheers.